Hey guys, thank you so much for taking a few minutes to sit in for the presentation. For those of you who uh, don't know, this is also serving as my senior project for Columbus State University's R and BSN program. So this is my senior capstone submission. Uh, my name is Kristen Mallory. Thank you again for overlooking the setup in here for the for the recordings. But my name is Kristen Mallory. I am a nurse here in the intensive care unit as well as the cath lab downstairs. So this particular presentation I felt very strongly to touch on, uh, something I think that we definitely need to enhance, to improve on within the hospital. Um, so we will go ahead and get started. Now I do want to go ahead and let you know that for some of us in the next couple of months that are here, we will be um, starting, we'll transitioning to take care of our post-PCI patients. So this is also very important for you to understand. So for your sake, we will, we're going to go back and start from the beginning on what PCI is um, and where we as a nurse uh, what, what role we as a nurse play in this. Um, and then for some of you from the step down units, the ICU, and from the cath recovery, um, we're familiar with this, but we are going to touch back on that. Never hurts to go back. And then we'll look at what we're focusing on in this presentation, which is uh, reducing the 30 day readmissions following a PCI. We've uh, looked at this um, a year or so ago on the CHF patient, and we've seen pretty great uh, results from implementing the teach back on our CHF patients. So hopefully we are looking to see the same results by doing this for our PCI patients. So let's go ahead and start with the PowerPoint. We're gonna go ahead and hit these lights if you don't mind. Um, it'll be dark for a few minutes um, for the recording. I know that it's kind of hard to see, but we really wanna focus on this PowerPoint. Um, so we'll start from the beginning. Reducing the hospital readmission following percutaneous coronary intervention, fancy big word, PCI patients. Um, so just here, just a little abstract on what we're looking at. Hospitals across the U.S. focus in on risk factors that increase the chance of readmissions in patients who have, under, who have recently undergone the PCI um, or the percutaneous coronary intervention. Strong efforts are being made to enhance education for the PCI patient. Now again, we've looked at this with our CHF patients in the past, but core measure is something that we focused on um, immensely within this particular hospital. I know that it's something that we have added on to our uh, Meditech protocols that we go through each shift to do to verify our core measures um, are being met. Um, but this is something that we're going to focus on really with improving the education of our PCI patient. I think that we've seen a lot of our 30 day readmissions in any of our um, core measure patients, so our recent surgeries, our CHF and our PCIs, coming in due to a lack of understanding of medications, a lack of knowledge on their restrictions when they go home, and just a general lack of understanding for their um, situation that their their most recent procedure. The objectives of this presentation understand the risk factors associated with the 30 day readmissions. Again, that's that's key here. Knowing what our patients um, feel that they need more understanding of to better um, care for themselves once they're discharged from the hospital evaluate current discharge protocol that we actually have in place at the hospital in comparison to the teach back method. Now the teach back method is really going to be key in this presentation. It's the whole focus on um, possibly decreasing the number of readmissions in our PCI patients is really using that teach back method which we have put in progress here with our CHF patients um, and seeing great results from. So implementing that teach back for our P PCI patients as well. Reduce the number of hospital readmissions is the main goal by improving education for our PCI patients being discharged home. So let's just get started. Like I said, we're just going to go back from the beginning, kind of just ask what is PCI? What are these patients? What are we, what are they undergoing at the time? And what are they, um, what's the next steps for them after discharge? So what is PCI? PCI stands for percutaneous coronary intervention, also called an angioplasty. PCI is a very common procedure involving opening up the arteries that have either become blocked or narrowed, um, and in turn it reduces the blood supply to the heart. For some, this procedure can reduce serious symptoms such as chest pain, shortness of breath, other associating uh, symptoms like that. Um, for the patients that are experiencing an active heart attack, this procedure is life-saving, can be life-saving. Um, so just to kind of sum things up in what we see as nurses on duty. A new patient comes in, uh, possibly by ambulance from home, complaining of chest pain, or maybe they come in through EMS uh, active STEMI. So we, we know they're actively having a heart attack. Um, physician brings them into the cath lab. Um, our cardiologist, interventionalist, 
is at the bedside as well as our circulator and our scrub techs um, and then the other patient, people that are uh, involved in the cath lab routine. Um, the patient's conscious, consciously sedated. We go in, we start looking for blockages or, or whatever is causing the chest pain, the symptoms, or the cause of the actual heart attack. Um, if a stent is placed, a vessel is noted to be clotted or thin or narrowed, and we go in and balloon, or we go in and place a stent in the artery, they are no longer a diagnostic heart cath patient, they become a PCI patient. So any type of intervention deems them the title of a PCI patient. Um, go to the next one. What happens next? So that patient, after the heart cath, they go up to our step down unit um, and our sixth floor unit now and we are looking to extend the patients um, as far as access sites, whether we access their groin or the radial artery. Um, we're looking at extending the number of patients that actually go to our sixth floor unit. So for some of you, this is uh, where, you'll, where you'll play a recovery role. Um, what happens next after discharge though? Patients usually go home after one night in the hospital following a PCI, unless, the, unless this was um, something that happened in addition to an under, another thing that kept them hospitalized, another, uh, another diagnosis, then usually it's just a one night stay. Uh, if stents were placed in the affected artery, a blood thinner will be prescribed in order to prevent blockage within the stent. So for the patients who are not already on a blood thinner, they will go home. Berlin to Clavix, some sort of blood thinner that will keep that stent from becoming reblocked. Um, patients are able to return to normal activities, including work, within one week, gradually increasing their activity level to being able to pretty much go full force where they were um, before in one week. Follow-up appointments are required to allow the opportunity for assessment as well as evaluation of the medications. Now this follow-up procedure with the cardiologist after the discharge usually takes place two to three weeks um, if, if possible um, after the patient's been discharged. So that's two to three weeks after a stent has been placed after medications have been required to be taken daily. So by then we can actually, uh, it, it, because of that, that delay in discharge and the three weeks of follow up, it's very important that that patient knows what should be taking place, uh, what their responsibilities are in their home care within that three weeks. So PCIs may reduce the symptoms of coronary heart disease. It is not a cure for coronary heart disease. Um, or it's risk factor, so that's something that's very imp important for our patients to understand. Came in, you got a stent, this does not mean that you will not come back in with another blockage, um, that there are changes that have to be made. Lifestyle changes are necessary in maintaining the greatest results following PCI. Lifestyle changes may include diet changes, uh, like a, a low fat diet, losing weight, increasing activity, stopping tobacco use, that's a big one, um, and reducing stress. Yeah, right, right, I mean, reducing stress. Um, easier said than done. But the other, I mean, diet modifications, increasing your activity, stopping tobacco use, that is huge, those are huge lifestyle changes that need to take place. The patient definitely needs to understand the importance of uh, making those modifications. Uh, compliance with medications is another way of assuring the best outcome after PCI. So did you know, Medicare's website now offers a measure of 30-day readmission rates for patients who have undergone PCIs. Um, so they actually, per hospital, can look and see what the rate is of 30-day uh, readmissions after the patient has gone through, uh, undergone a PCI. According to the PCI measuring tool on Medicare site, between January 2010 and November 2011, so it's a pretty, uh, pretty long stint, um, hospitals average an 11.9% 30-day readmission rate on PCI patients, and that, that's pretty significant. So the most reported reason for these 30-day readmissions following PCI, non-compliance with medications as a result of inadequate education provided to the PCI patient. So um, basically this information was captured after the, the patients who did come in post 30 days, the reason for their readmission was evaluated and it looked to be non-compliance with their blood thinners uh, when following up with the patient why the non-compliance was even an issue, uh, why it wasn't being taken as directed, why um, it had just been you know, forgotten after discharge. It was all because the patient did not understand 
the possibility of clogging up the stent again or just understanding the importance of the blood thinner at all. And this is a little funny. What fits your busy schedule? <laughs> Exercising an hour a day or being dead 24 hours a day? So that was cute. All right, so a need for change. This is a little hard to read. Patients being readmitted to the hospital within 30 days following PCI risk a greater likelihood for residual cardiac disease. Um, outside of the increased risk for CAD and other associated illnesses, readmitted patients have a higher mortality rate. And then readmission carries a poor overall outcome for the PCI patient. Also serves as a burden for the healthcare system, and we all know that as far as our core measures go and reimbursement policies for the hospital um, regarding our 30 day readmission patients. So I, and I love this, this quote that um, James Blankenship, which is a physician, had said the real opportunity is after the angioplasty and before they go home. So that is where we as nurses come in. This is our time with our patient. Um, it's a real opportunity. It's making sure they are so tuned up, so well educated, and so comfortable about going home that they don't have to come back. So they don't readmit because they have questions. And uh, insurance, their private insurance doesn't exist. So hey, let's let, let's let Medicare, Medicaid, um, pay for us coming back in to ask our questions that we don't understand. So that's where it becomes a true burden to the hospital. We need to make sure we equip our patients with that type of knowledge before they ever set foot out of the hospital. Um, studies evaluating the high readmission rate of patients presenting to the hospital 30 days post PCI focus on the need for provided uh, for improved education. So the reason why we're having the presentation today. Uh, better communication can help reduce PCI readmissions. Getting to know your patient, their concerns, their family, their income issues, um, their benefits, their uh, financial barriers, that, or their family support, that, that's huge. We need to understand our patients and where they're coming from, what they're going home to um, as a home life. And by understanding that, we can, we can equip our patients for what they need to know, what they need to have, set them up with social services if they need some outside knowledge that we can't provide. Um, and the teach, back method, the teach Back Method strategy is one method that we will be focused on in an effort to increase patient understanding. So let's just talk about teach back. And again, this is something we've already implemented with just our CHF patients. We actually have the protocol, the outline for the teach back um, that is more specialized or more uh, made up for the CHF patient, but we also have one that we've created for this presentation that we're looking at implementing for the PCI patient. Um, when using the teach back method, the discharging nurse asks the patient to explain back to the nurse what they learned. Uh, the patient should be using their own words to describe their understanding of, and then we touch on all this. Why were they admitted? The procedure that that pa patient had done, do they even know what the procedure is called? Um, expected outcomes upon discharge, do they know what they're going to have to refrain from doing? Do they know what their restrictions are going to be for the next week? Um, medications. Are they on a blood thinner already that they're going to be continuing but maybe a higher dose? Are they going to be stopping the blood thinner they're on because it hasn't been working properly and be placed on a stronger um, anticoagulant? Uh, medications. I oh, would just touch on that. Uh, Follow-up appointments. Do they know when it's going to take place? Do they understand the importance of actually following up with that two to three week uh, pre-made uh, follow-up appointment? We usually make that here for them. Sometimes they think, oh, I can't make that. They didn't check with me on my schedule. I am working on Thursdays. Um, and they think, well, I just won't show up. Instead of just touching base, saying, hey, we made this for you for convenience, but if you need to change it, here's what you need to do, and here's the number to contact. Okay, and this is just one of the questions we focus on. This is our PICA question from school, but I did leave this up here. Do post-PCI patients receiving a discharge pharmacy consult and teach back method discharge instructions have a decreased readmission rate in comparison to post-PCI patients receiving the standard instructions. This is just our, our fancy question of saying, will receiving teach back make a difference? We've got our standard discharge versus our teach back, and we're going to um, act on this here in a minute, but I do want to show you what the differences are. So we have our standardized discharge information right here, current discharge information given to the patient following PCI. This is what we already have going within our hospital. Um, and I, I have the copy out the copy because it's pertinent to the hospital and has a has our information on it. Wouldn't come through a PowerPoint, but I do have that. I want to pass out. Um, but I'll go ahead and do that now. And we'll hit the lights in a minute. I think I have enough for everybody. Here, pass these down. 
and the top one's two pages. Um, okay, so this is the current active discharge information that we have here at the hospital. Um, includes a copy of the current PCI discharge information. And this is something we've adopted from the um, Georgia Heart Clinic site. So this is something that we use and it's pretty widespread across uh, the state as far as just standardized information that's given um, to the patient that they actually go home with this, we don't get it back um, to review. It is two pages long and this is in addition to everything else they get discharge. Their labs within the hospital, their medications they've received here, um, and then standard discharge instructions just from being in the hospital that aren't related to PCI. They usually go home with at minimum 12 to 14 pages of just full-blown text that we expect them to read and that's going to be their under that's going to be their education. Um, then we have their teach back the proposed discharge instructions that we're we're talking about today um, includes teach back version method of discharge information. So this is the, the teach back method um, that we've kind of used from our CHF patients and formatted it to the PCI patient. So we're gonna look at these. Let's hit the light for a second. And um, Charles, if you'll come up here and help me, if you don't mind. Hi, Charles. Hello again. Well, Charles, today you are going to be a 64-year-old man. You cannot read this, but I'll read it on here, if you don't mind. All right, so Charles, you're going to be Mr. Jones, a 64-year-old male who presented to the ED, um, which is perfect. You're ER representative today. Um, with a chief complaint of non-radiating chest pain. After an abnormal stress test, the patient undergoes a heart cath, resulting in the placement of two stents. Um, so you are no longer a diagnostic a uh, heart cath patient, you are now a PCI patient because you have the two stents. We have intervened um, in, the, in the cath lab. So you had two stents placed in the LAD. This is Mr. Jones' first heart cath. Um, his only history includes high blood pressure, high cholesterol, uh, for which he takes two medications at home. So we are going to provide you with both types of instructions, one at a time. And I just kind of want to let you see what the patient is um, experiencing here at discharge when we provide them with our, our discharge education. So let's pull off on this teach back. And we're just gonna go through with what we give. I mean, and I know that being in the ER, you don't discharge. So this may be somewhat new to you actually seeing the discharge instructions after a PCI, but it'll be good for you to see. Um, so all right, Mr. Jones, my name is Kristen and I'm going to be the, um, heart, the cath lab nurse that's going to be giving you your discharge instructions today. So um, in case you're aware, we did do a PCI um, when you came in from the ER complaining of the chest pain. We found the two blockages in the LAD um, and placed a stent. So we, um, or I said two blockages, placed two stents for the two blockages we found in the LAD. So um, I know that you've never had this done before, so you've never been on any type of blood thinner, but the doctor does have you going home on Plavix, 75 milligrams a day that you will take daily, okay? You don't want to miss a day on that. Um, he did schedule a follow-up appointment with his nurse practitioner on March 14th at uh, 9.30 a.m. So you, if you can't make that, just go ahead and schedule whatever time is beneficial for you. Now, we're just going to go down the list and just talk to you about your care of your incision. So we went through your right femoral artery, so that right groin down there, that's why you have that um, pressure dressing. You're gonna, your care for your incision and dressing is we're going to remove that uh, tomorrow morning and replace it with a Band-Aid. You kind of want to keep that site dry, no lotions, no bodies of water, so no hot tubs, no swimming, um, no tub baths. You can shower 24 hours after, but we really want to focus on keeping that area dry and clean. Um, activity, go home and rest today. Don't try to run any marathons. Um, increase your activity gradually over the next three days. So I know that you work out, won't be going to the gym tomorrow, just kind of slowly, grab, uh, you know, slowly increase that activity level. Uh, limit your heavy, heavy lifting for 24 to 72 hours, okay? Normal observation, we expect you to be sore. Okay, the physician says that you can take over the counter medications as ibuprofen or Tylenol to reduce pain. If that doesn't work, you need to let us know. Okay, we expect soreness that can be relieved by a general over the counter medication. Uh, possible bruising around the area may occur. That's okay. Inspect the site daily. 
Call your doctor immediately if any bleeding occurs at the site. You increase your swelling or unusual pain around the, around the site. Sites of infection or signs of infection occur. Fever, chills, yellow drainage, tender or red streaks, any other concerns. Um, that, we'll send that home with you. And that's in case you think everybody got one here. That is a full page of instructions. Uh, notify your doctor if you experience the following. And this is just generalized discharge instructions, not pertaining to the PCI, but just because you were in the hospital. Fever, pain, pressure not early by medications, increased shortness of breath, swelling of the feet, hands, ankles, or incisions. Fingers or toes turn blue in color. Persistent numbness or tingling in fingers or toes. Change in color, odor, amount of discharge from your wound. Nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, inability to urinate, burning, or difficulty breathing. Any bleeding, excessive bruising, or rash. Dizziness or fainting, change in speech. And then, of course, you'll also receive a stack of paperwork that shows all of your current labs that you've been in the hospital, your medications you've received in the hospital, copies of uh, information regarding the stents in case any physician outside of here would like to know what type of stents you have. Um, and then we're also giving you the prescription for your 75 milligrams a day Flavix that you'll take um, upon discharge. So you'll have to take this to your pharmacy to be filled. All right. We just want to make sure that you feel confident going home and understanding everything you need to know. Now that is a lot of information. And this is our standardized, little exaggerated on how fast we go, maybe. I mean, we are nurses who have four to six patients and knowing that four patients down the row in our um, ICU step down are all waiting for us to give education before they can go home and they're ready to go home. Um, that may be an actual speed that some of us do. And we think that they understand what a anticoagulant is or what Plavix is. And they may not. I mean, Plavix, they may think that that's some form of um, Tylenol or ibuprofen. I mean, it's very important that we really, really um, focus on the understanding of our patients. So this is what we give our patients in addition to the extra 10 to 12 pages of lab work and medications and prescriptions if they go home with that. Nothing stays signed. We don't get anything except for a page that says I'm ready to go home. That's the only signature that we get in the hospital. Now, this is our teach back. So everybody just kind of switch over to the teach back one. And now this one is actually, you'll see at the bottom has the date, time, and the nurse's signature. So this is something that we sign. We give the signed copy to the patient. We keep one on the chart to show, and this, this is all what we're looking at, see, that we've done in the past with the CHF patients. It's what we're looking at doing with our PCI patients. So we sign this and give them our signed copy, and we keep the signed copy as well. So, now. Over. And I'm going to provide you with a pen just in case you need to take any notes, all right? All right, Mr. Jones, my name is Kristen. I'm one of the nurses in the cath lab. I actually helped take care of you when you came in. I know that you don't um, remember that I was actually in the cath lab when we did your, um, when you, we did your heart cath. So I know that um, Dr. Smith has come in and talked to you about what he has placed as far as stents in the main artery uh, or the main left side artery okay, of your heart. So we did find the two blockages. We placed two drug eluting stents, which means it's a medication that um, will will elude some a drug that tries to help keep that from clogging up. Okay. So I'm just going to give you a little bit of discharge instructions at any time if you have any questions. Just ask me. But what I want to do is just kind of talk to you about what your discharge instructions are going to be. And um, if you want to make notes, this will be yours to keep, and I'm going to sign it, and I'm going to keep a copy on the chart just so that we know that we touch, touched over all this with you. All right, so um, your medications. You were never on a blood thinner before, um, but since we did place those stents, we want to keep that or prevent that from becoming uh, clotted up again. So Dr. Smith is going to discharge you home with a prescription. I have this here in your packet of Plavix. That is a blood thinner. You're going to take 75 milligrams. It's one tablet per day. And this is going to be very important that you take that medication. Um, that blood thinner is to, to keep those stents, which are prone to becoming clotted again, from, action, from becoming useless, from becoming clotted up again, and bringing you back in here for the same reason. So missing a day puts you at risk for having another clot form within that stand. Okay, so we definitely don't want to miss a day on that Plavix. Um, do you know, uh, oh, so on your side, so we went in through your right femoral artery, so let's really focus on that, that incision and that dressing where we went in for the heart cap. We went into that right femoral artery, which is right there in that groin where you have that dressing, that gauze and that tape. Uh, we're gonna keep that covered today 
but tomorrow morning when you wake up, you can actually take that off, shower, you can shower 24 hours after you've had the heart cath, so we can go ahead and shower, but we want to keep that area as dry and clean as possible because it is an open access site where it's prone to get infection. So no tub baths, no pools, no hot tubs, anything that involves you sitting in a body of water, and let's not do it for five days, okay, and that's on your discharge instructions for five days. Um, we want to keep lotions and powders away from the site, anything that can get into that little hole that could cause an infection. We're going to replace it with a band-aid every day when you wake up. Just put a new band-aid on and look at that site. Make sure it's not red. Make sure it's not swollen. Um, we expect a little bit of tenderness, but anything that looks like it could be infected, you need to let us know. But we'll ch claim, uh, change out that band-aid every morning um, and just look and make sure there's no bleeding at the site. Um, go home and rest today. I know that you worked out. We're going to take a few days to actually get back to where we were working out wise at the gym. Um, we're going to gradually increase our activity. So go home, rest today, do a little bit more tomorrow. Um, no heavy lifting for 24 to 72 hours. Now with that site, I know I already told you soreness is expected and it may occur for a few days. The physician has said, Dr. Smith has said, you can go home and take ibuprofen and you can take Tylenol. Anything over the counter that you normally take for like a headache, it's fine to take for some soreness around that area. If it's not relieved by an over-the-counter medication and that pain is uh, more than just, just a dull soreness, let us know so we can make sure that something's not wrong with the site. Um, possible bruising may happen, and that's okay. So that's why we're inspecting the site daily, just to make sure it's not red, purple, swollen, anything like that, or re-bleeding. And we're gonna call the doctor or the hospital here, and I've written our phone number down on our discharge information. Um, if any of these following include, uh, incl um, or if any of the fo uh, following are experienced. Um, if you start seeing some re-bleeding at the site, we're gonna hold pressure right above that little hole that we showed you earlier when we dressed the site. Hold a lot of pressure there. Um, and then let us, and then come back into the hospital. Or if you have increased swelling or unusual pain, again, that's not, um, take, that's not under control by I ibuprofen or Tylenol, let us know. And then signs of, infe signs of infection, which could be anything from a fever, chills, drainage from that area, or like tender red streaks, okay? Um, do you have any support at home? Yes, I have a wife. Your wife? Okay, so she'll be there to help you today. So if you're, you know, if you live in a one-story or two-story, if you're living in a two-story, let your wife help you upstairs. You might want to sleep downstairs in, in the downstairs bedroom tonight so you don't have to climb the stairs. But um, at least we you know your wife's there to help you. Um, and if she were to have any questions, she's more than welcome to call and ask us as well. Um, so you, and you don't use anything at home except for your medications for the high blood pressure, high cholesterol. You don't use oxygen or anything like that at home, but you may need us to set up. Okay. Um, and of course, we didn't use your home medications this time, so uh, we provided you with the hospital medications. So we've returned your, your home medications to your wife. Um, and then this is just going to be some more generalized knowledge as far as since you were an inpatient at the hospital. Just generally what we would send home for our inpatients. If you experience in the followings, let us know. Okay. Now, um, hopefully, nothing will bring you back into the hospital, but just basically, what we've already gone over as far as um, signs of infection would we'll bring you back in. Okay. I'm gonna send you home with this paperwork, but what I do want to make sure is that you understand everything that we've gone over. So, Mr. Jones, do you know about the medication that I'm sending you home with? Yes. Okay. And what am I sending you home with today? Uh, Plavix. Okay. And do you know what type of medication that is? Uh, a blood thinner. Yes. All right. Do you know the dosage that you're going to be taking every day? 75 milligrams. And how often? I'm just kind of gave that away to you. How often do you take that? A day. All right. All right. And do you have your home medications? Yes. Okay. And I've sent them home with your wife. Yes. All right. Um, tell me about your signs and your symptoms to look for at home and when to call the doctor or 911. Uh, any pain or swelling that can, can, can be taken care of with uh, over-the-counter medications. Mm -hmm. Redness, tenderness, swelling, bruising, um, bruising other than what is expected. Mm -hmm. um, That's uh, great. That's yeah. great. What is your activity today? Rest. Okay. And then gradually? Gradually over the next 24 to 72 hours. Exactly. And do we have anybody at home to help you? Yes. We said your wife. Yeah. Okay. And then you did not need any specialized equipment at home? No O2, no, nothing like that. Um, when, you're, when is your follow-up appointment? And I have that written down, and that's my fault that I didn't touch on it. Yes. But March, and I have this written down on your discharge instructions, but I do have your follow-up appointment if you want to write it here. 
It's going to be March 14th at 9.30 a.m. with Dr. Smith's nurse practitioner, Mrs. White. Mm -hmm. Now we do go ahead and make that um, convenient, uh, make that appointment for you so that you don't have to worry about that when you get home and it's kind of hard sometimes to get in with them. Um, but if for some reason that does not work with your work schedule, just call and let them know that you need to reschedule for something that's convenient for you, okay? But we definitely want to keep that appointment because he wants to follow up and make sure that everything's working well for you. And we've already touched on your whole medications that your wife has those. And the last question, do you have your inhaler drops, cranes that doesn't apply to you because you don't take them at home? All right. Well, thank you, Charles, for being Mr. Jones here for a few minutes. So we just kind of see what the difference is, and I know that all of you have this paper, and we didn't even touch on all the questions because they may not apply to him, but he was able to write his notes down. We're going to make a copy for this, keep it on the chart, and then we're going to send him home with a copy. Because these, these are simple questions, but these are questions that not understanding them will bring him back into the hospital. He didn't, he didn't know his privates was important to take every day. Um, so he, the, the stent reclotted, you know, so we have to go in and stint inside of a stint now because it's, it's clogged up. Um, he didn't understand his activity and he started re-bleeding at the site. You know, he went straight back to work because he is the only man in the house who does yard work. So he went straight back to mowing the grass today and opened up that artery and he is now bleeding um, profusely. So these are, these are simple things, but this is stuff that we may forget to touch on because we have so many papers to go through a discharge. So that is our teach back method. Charles, do you see a little bit of a difference asking you all those questions? Yes. And, and you work in the field, so you are familiar with our discharge protocol in the ER. Um, and it's still overwhelming to hear the amount of information we send home, even as healthcare providers. All right, can you hit those lights? We've got just a couple more slides and we're done. So by implementing the teach back method in this improved discharge process, um, we can expect to see a greater understanding of information resulting in a greater compliance in our PCI patients. Greater patient outcomes because they're not being readmitted within 30 days. Um, a reduced number of 30 day readmissions, which is beneficial to the patient for their overall outcomes, is beneficial for the hospital um, for financial outcomes. Reduced healthcare costs associated with readmission expenses. So let's evaluate. So we did this with our CHF uh, patients. We're going to do this again, um, the same evaluation time. Um, and I think that we'll really start to see a significant uh, number of uh, patients who are compliant with their medications, who are, not, who are not having to readmit to the hospital. So the teach back method will be implemented into our new discharge process beginning March 1st, which is actually the same time that our sixth floor is going to be taking some of our growing patients, our growing stick patients. Um, and PCIs. So that's a perfect perfect day to start evaluating. So we're going to start March 1st. We're going to reevaluate the, effect, the effectiveness, kind of look at our numbers on where we're at hospital wide. Um, on our 30 day readmissions, just only for PCI right now. So we've already done our CHF. We are looking for PCI patients in our 30 day readmissions. And the effectiveness after 90 days. And we will see what this teach back method has done. And hopefully we will look at implementing this uh, long term. So um, let's see. All right, and the rest are just references. So guys, I, again, can you feel to touch the last one? Thank y'all so much for coming in. Y'all were a part of my senior project as well, so thank you for that. And I really think that we're gonna see a huge difference and glad that y'all took a few minutes to sit in with me. And um, that's it, y'all are dismissed. Thank you so much. And this is Kristen Mallory, and this was my senior capstone project. Thank you. <laughs>